and welcome to the end times. People from atheists to Gnostics to religions like Muslims and Jehovah Witness all believe that Jesus Christ did exist. What they don't agree upon is the fact that Jesus Christ is not only the Son of God, but that He is God. And they don't agree upon that. They don't believe in the Trinity and state that it is not in the Bible. Well, the word Trinity may not be in the Bible, but neither is the Bible itself. If you look in the Bible, you can't find the word Bible. That doesn't mean that the Bible does not exist, because I'm holding on to one right now. The question I am going to answer today is, is Jesus Christ really God? In order for Jesus Christ to be God, He had to uh, exist from the beginning, and in order to prove this point, without a doubt, we must find the answer from a very, very credible source, who has never been wrong and has always been 100% accurate. Well, good news, there is such a source, and it is called the Holy Bible, God's undisputable word. Since the Bible is the only word in existence that has prophesied and foretold prophecies hundreds and thousands of years ago with 100% accuracy, then we can safely rely on it and on its answers to questions like, is Jesus Christ God? The Holy Bible begins with Genesis 1.1, which states, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was God and not the Big Bang Theory or Darwin's theory of evolution that created this magnificent earth. Then it continues in Genesis 1.26 saying, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth including Satan, this is the snake, which we do have authority over. Now, the pronouns us and our speak of more than one person, meaning that more than one person was present and participated in the creation of the earth. If that wasn't true, then God Jehovah would have said, me and mine, which is singular. But he didn't. He indicated pluralism. That other person which Genesis speaks about is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jehovah. If you look in the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, it also proves that Jesus Christ existed from the very beginning, and it reads as follows. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though, are little, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. Now here's the real big point whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. Okay? In other words, God Jehovah is saying that Israel will have a ruler which has existed from the very beginning. That ruler which was born of Mary turned out to be Jesus Christ. Here's more proof that not only Jesus Christ has always existed, but he was a participant in the creation of the world. God's Son is mentioned in the Old Testament way before his human birth in the New Testament, Proverbs 34, indicates who has ascended into heaven or descended, who has gathered the wind in his fists, who has bound the waters in his garments, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you know? Okay? Clearly indicates that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, came down to earth to become human and ascended back to heaven and created the earth. Jesus Christ already existed from the beginning and did not begin in Bethlehem's manger like some would like uh, would lead you to believe. If you look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, it also proves that Jesus Christ existed from the beginning by stating the following, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You must understand that in order for you to give something to someone, that thing in which you're giving has to exist already. If I promise to give you a Bible, I better have that Bible ready to give it to you. 
I can't promise you something I don't have. Isaiah 9, 6 also calls him mighty and everlasting. Only God is authorized to carry that title, meaning that the Father has given the title to the Son, thus acknowledging that he is God. Now, if you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23, gives Jesus the title of God by calling him Emmanuel, which interpreted is God with us. Now, go back to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14. Christ is called the Word, and the Word was made flesh. Jesus became human, in other words, and dwelt among us. Even further proof is in John 1, verses 1 to 3, which reads as follows. In the beginning was the Word, or Jesus, because Jesus is the Word, and the Word was with God, meaning Jesus was with God, or with God Jehovah, and the Word was God, meaning Jesus was God, and is God. I mean, they can't get any plain, it's simple English. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He is God. This comes directly from God Jehovah, the Father. Some people say that the Word actually means the Word of God or the Bible. But how can the Bible be God? It doesn't make any sense, does it? If you look at verse 2, it states, He, meaning Jesus, was in the beginning with God. What more proof do you want? Now let's go to verse 3. And it states, All things were made through Him, through Jesus. And without Him, which is Jesus, nothing was made that was made. Here again, more proof that Jesus was the creator of all things, including the earth and man. If you still doubt, here's one more proof. Let's go to John 1, verse 10, which states, he was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. Referring to Jesus Christ. When He became man, He was in the world, and the world knew Him not. Because most of them didn't believe Him. This is plainly referring to Jesus Christ. So to conclude, if you take Genesis 1, verses 1 to 2, and you take uh, John 1, verse 10, and combine them together, this proves without a doubt that the Trinity, which is made up of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, was present in the creation of the world and has always existed. That's solid proof right there. If you would like further information concerning this or other topics, please feel free to visit my website at endtimes.us.com. And while you're there, feel free to pick up a copy of my book titled, Welcome to the End Times. It is loaded with information concerning Jesus Christ, concerning end times events, and everything on this video is pretty much in there, fully explained. May God bless you, and until next time, Lord willing.